How's it going, guys? Medium difficulty question for micro for step one. Before we start the subscribe channel, I really appreciate it. Give you a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, element underscore medical, and me, HLM, man underscore medical. Links down below for me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group channel down below. And I'll start the clip. 39 year old woman, 40 history of painful tearing right eye. And we have a fluorescein installation. Fluorescein is a an orange dye that, when uh, instilled, dripped onto the eye, and then we use a blue light. Everything that's normal. Uh, in terms of the mucosal barriers, the architecture, the anatomy of the eye. Anything that's normal is going to appear blue. Anything abnormal is going to appear green. So question wants to know that uh, the organism uh, most likely responsible for this condition is most taxonomically similar to which the following, okay? Now, before we even hop into this question, I should tell you that when you get a, a fluorescein question on the USMLE where you're like, there was some blue image. I wasn't sure what I was looking at. <clears throat> About half the time, it's going to be this where you see what's called a dendritic pattern. It looks branching, right? Like, like similar to dendrites, like a tree. Okay, we have this dendritic pattern here. That's about half of questions. And then the other half is going to be corneal abrasion. Okay, I've made clips on that as well. Dude playing in a sandbox uh, with his kid or a metal worker. Okay, so the organism here is going to be herpes. This is herpes keratitis. Okay. The, this diagnosis is past level, but it's a medium difficulty question because obviously we get into more of the micro stuff. But this is herpes keratitis, uh, which means inflammation of the cornea. You should also know that uh, herpes zoster, okay, varicella, so herpes zoster ophthalmicus can present similar to this. Okay. It's just herpes viridae is going to have this dendritic pattern of the eye. All right, so let's just hop to the answers here. Should I say echovirus? Wrong fucking answer. Echovirus, RNA virus that causes meningitis. Literally, that's all you need to know. Okay, so it's just, it's if a patient has an aseptic meningitis, where you have glucose normal, protein normal, or ever so slightly elevated increased lymphocytes on CSF analysis, right? Stiff neck, photophobia. So if there's an aseptic meningitis, which <clears throat> is another way of saying viral meningitis, and someone says, well, what virus is it most likely to be? You're like, hmm, actually, I have no fucking idea. The answer is going to be echovirus, okay? There's others that can do it, like mumps, that can cause meningitis, palm, parotitis, orchitis, meningitis, but echovirus. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, hepatitis A, wrong fucking answer. Now, so, sort of self-explanatory, okay, fecal, oral, and so enteral, Mexico, okay, so acute uh, A and E, acute hepatitis uh, in comparison to BCD, chronic hepatitis. So hepatitis A and echovirus are taxonomically similar. That's how you know they're both fucking wrong, okay? So uh, they're both enteroviridae. So RNA virus, uh, single strand positive sense, non-segmented, uh, part of picornaviridae, enteroviridae. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, HIV, wrong fucking answer. So HIV is going to be RNA virus, uh, costahedral nucleocapsid. Point is it's RNA virus, right? And it's a retrovirus. So you can also have HTLV, very similar to HIV. That's what they can do. Uh, I probably made a YouTube question, a question on it. I mean, literally 821 fucking questions here, right? So what they'll do is say uh, some dude usually in the Pacific, he's got a neurologic problem. Uh, that's called tropical spastic paraparesis. That's called that's caused by HTLV. Okay, one and two. Uh, those viruses can also cause um, Caesare syndrome, T cell leukemia, or mycosis fungoides, cutaneous T cell lymphoma. And then the question can say the most likely causal organism, obviously being HTLV, is most taxonomically similar to which the following, and the answer is HIV. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, measles virus, wrong fucking answer. So RNA, helical nucleocapsid, enveloped, okay? So measles, part of paramyxoviridae. Viridae means family. So you're going to have many viruses under that envelope. So under paramyxoviridae, the four main viruses, you have paramyxovirus, which is just parainfluenza virus, croup, mumps, measles, RSV for bronchiolitis. Wrong fucking answer. Choice E, parvirus B19, correct answer. Well, it's the only DNA virus here. 
So literally, it's not dramatic. I mean, okay, parvirus B19, it's a DNA virus. It's non-enveloped, it's single-stranded linear, okay? You have herpes viridae, it's gonna be DNA uh, enveloped, double-stranded linear, okay? So I said parvirus B19, uh, non-enveloped. US simply doesn't really give a fuck about all the envelope, non enveloped for most of the viruses. We can make this a lengthy discussion. It's going to confuse many of you here. I've made other YouTube clips on this that for those types of very nitpicky classifications, the only thing I really want you to know is herpes viridae versus hep B. So herpes viridae being HSV 1 and 2, VZV, EBV, CMV. Roseola, HHV6, okay, Pteriasis rosea, HHV7, and then Kaposi sarcoma like virus, HHV8. Those are all the herpes viridae. They're DNA double stranded linear, enveloped, okay, whereas hepatitis B is double stranded circular. That's a distinction that sounds ultra nitpicky. I agree with you on that one. It's assessed on the US simile. And then you can be aware that rotavirus is RNA double stranded segmented. Okay, they like that. The same way influenza viruses, RNA, but single-stranded segmented. So if all that sounds really nitpicky, that's pretty much all you need to know in terms of those uh, pedantic classifications, okay? But what I did here is just simply Parvo is the only one that's DNA. Herpes is DNA. And even if you thought this is uh, VZV, herpes zoster ophthalmicus, it's still DNA. It's still herpes viridae. So Parvo's B19, obviously, is a fifth disease slap cheek appearance in a kid, and it can cause uh, aplastic anemia, classically in sickle cell. It can cause just a pure RBC aplasia as well. US family loves daycare centers for adults with parvo. So they'll give you a woman, 20s to 30s, and they'll say daycare center, and she's got a rash, and that's it. Nothing about aplastic anemia, nothing like that. And it'll just be like, go fetch uh, parvo uh, B19 IgM titers. Correct answer. Finally, West Nile virus, wrong fucking answer. Only seems to assess one sign of BME exam, nonsense. Okay, I believe it was NBME 11. Actually, no, 12. Uh, offline for step one back in the day. And I know that because I had gotten the question wrong on that NBME exam where they told you there was a patient with a severe uh, retroocular headache, which sounded like dengue. That's why I got the question fucking wrong, okay? And so it sounds like dengue. They, you can get a headache with it. And they say, uh, they said, which of the following viruses has, is spread by Culex mosquito and has a bird reservoir? And the answer was, was West Nile virus on that form. Uh, NBME 12, I believe it was. Could be 11, but I think it's 12. Doesn't fucking matter, does it? Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. I feel like my stuff. Subscribe channel. Appreciate your time. That's it.